Hello, it's Hong here. I'm going to show you how to process the raw data that you and other students in human biology collected in Practical 2. What we have here is some dummy data. So obviously the results you get from analyzing your own data downloaded from Blackboard will be different to what you see in this video. Now recall that the research question was, does the consumption of caffeine enhance exercise performance? We had subjects split into two groups, A or B, and one group consumed caffeine um, containing coffee, while the other group drank decaffeinated coffee. And this was done in a double blind trial. So neither the subjects nor the researchers, that is the demonstrators or the people collecting the data knew the contents in the coffee. Let's first sort out our data so that all the values for the subjects in group A are together and the data for group B are also together. What you want to do is highlight your entire data set and you can do this by selecting all the columns that contain data, going to data in the top menu and then selecting sort. And we want to sort by group and then selecting OK. Just to make my life a little bit easier in distinguishing which data is from subjects in each group, I'm going to color code the cells. I'm highlighting all the data from group A and all I'm doing is selecting the cell in one corner of the data set, scrolling down until we get to the end of group A and selecting the cell in the opposite corner. And I'm going to make these cells, I don't know, light green. I'm going to do the same thing for data in group B. And I'll make this a darker green. So you also notice that as you scroll down your data set, the headings disappear. If you don't want that to happen, there is a nifty tool to prevent that from happening. And all you have to do is select the second row or the row that's under the heading, going to window in the top menu and selecting freeze panes. Okay. And then from this point onwards, as you scroll down your data set, your headings still remain within the screen. Okay, let's go to our data crunching. The exercise that was carried out was a four minute incremental step test. And we measured the subject's resting pulse rate and resting respiration rate before the exercise. And also the final pulse rate and the final respiration rate after the exercise. What we need to do with this data is calculate the change in pulse rate and change in respiration rate, because those are the values that will be used as an indicator of exercise performance. So let's create some new headings for these calculations. So I'm going to have um, one column for change in pulse rate with the units beats per minute for group A. I'm going to have the same thing for group B. So change in pulse rate with the units beats per minute for group B and also the change in respiration rate with the units being breaths per minute this time for group A and then the same thing group B. The great thing about Excel is that you can get it to do all your calculations for you and it's very quick. Now every time you want Excel to do some maths you need to enter an equal sign. So let's do that for in our second row under our heading now in this column, we want the change in rest, the change in pulse rate. In other words, 
the difference between the final pulse rate and the resting pulse rate. So all I'm going to do is select the first value in the final pulse rate column, entering a minus sign, followed by selecting the first value in the resting pulse rate column, and then selecting enter. Now, I don't want to have to repeat this step over a hundred times. So instead of entering the same formula in each row, I'm going to get Excel to copy that formula down the data set for me. So what you have to do is select the value that was just calculated, hovering your cursor over the bottom right hand corner and you'll see a black cross appear and then just dragging dragging down until you reach oh, until you reach the end of your data set for group A. You're going to do the same thing for group B. So again, type in an equal sign. And then you want to select the first final pulse rate value for group B. And then putting in a minus sign and then selecting the first resting pulse rate value for group B. And then enter. And then again, just select that value that was calculated, hover your cursor over the bottom right hand corner, and then just drag down. And I think I have a few more subjects in group B, so I'm just going to continue to drag. Okay. And I know these values um, that are zero um, come from empty cells being selected. So I'm going to delete that in this column. So I'm going to delete these two zero values and then continue with calculating the change in respiration rates for group A and group B. So you guys go ahead and do that for your own data set while I figure out how to do it for mine. Okay, so equals selecting the first value under the final respiration rate column minus the first value in the resting respiration rate column. we want to do now is to calculate the mean change in pulse rate and the mean change in respiration rate for both groups. And that is because we are interested in the population response and not so much the individual responses. So to get Excel to calculate the means for you, I'm just going to put in a heading here. Um, select an empty cell under the data that you want to calculate the means for. Enter in an equal an equal sign followed by typing in the word average. Now, it doesn't matter if you type it in upper caps or lower cap letters, you'll get the same result. Enter in an open bracket sign and you will be prompted to select the values that you want to calculate the average for. Obviously, we want to calculate the average um, of all the values in each column. So I am going to select the top value press down on the shift key and um, I'm going to select this um, the blank cell underneath my last value and I'll explain why in just a minute. Okay, Close brackets and enter. Now it doesn't matter if you have selected the bottom value first 
and then the top value, you still get the same result. Okay, so I want Excel to repeat this formula for all my columns. And all you have to do is select the value that was just calculated, hover your cursor again over the bottom right hand corner, select and drag across. Okay, so now if you double click on each of the means that were calculated for you, you will notice that Excel um, has included all the values in each of the columns. Okay, the values in the columns relevant to group A have this empty cell included, but it doesn't affect the calculations. And the only reason why I selected a blank cell here is so that when I've dragged the formula across, Excel knows to um, include the row that has the data for the extra subject in group B. Okay, now that you've calculated the means, you also need to calculate some measure of variability. Okay. Every time you present means, it needs to be accompanied by a measure of variability. Now there's several of them available to you. You can use the range, you can use standard error, um, which is very common in biology, and standard deviation, which is also common in biology. Um, we're going to get you to use standard deviation just because it's a little bit easier to calculate. Okay, so for Excel to um, calculate the standard deviation values for you, this time you need to type in STDEV, which is Excel's abbreviation for standard deviation. Open brackets and again, um, select the values just like you did um, for calculating the means. In your assignment, you will also need to report the sample size. In other words, the number of subjects that were in each group. Okay, so I am going to get Excel to determine the sample size for me. So this time you are going to use the count function. Okay. Again, having an empty cell in the calculation won't affect the values that you get. Okay. Okay, so you will notice that in group B you have an extra subject compared to group A and that's reflected in the values that you got Excel to calculate for you. There's one last thing you'll need to do before you go any further and that is just to clean up your values that you just calculated. Um, it's never really appropriate to present values to eight, nine decimal places. I mean, one or two is enough. Okay, so I'm going to select these values that I need to change the decimal places. And there is a shortcut button on the panel up here um, with um, all these zeros and an arrow. Okay, you need to select the one that decreases the number of decimal places and I'm going to present my values to one decimal place. Now it will be up to you to decide whether the data is more appropriate to be presented in a table or in a figure. If you feel that the table is the way to go, you'll need to create two tables, one to present the change in pulse rate data and the other to present the change in respiration rate data. Okay, Each table should have data for both groups. So group A, group B, actually no, you shouldn't be saying group A or group B because it's not very informative. You should be saying either decaffeinated or caffeinated treatment groups. All right. Go to your spreadsheet and see which group drank which type of coffee. In each table, you'll also need to present the standard deviation values and also the sample size. If you think that presenting this data in a graph is more appropriate for the report, what you'll need to do is present the data for the change in pulse rate in one graph and the change in respiration rate in another graph. So I'm just going to show you how to plot one of these graphs. Okay, so you want to be presenting the means in the graph 
and so what you want to do is um, go to the charts and select a column graph. Okay. I am going to choose a cluster column graph and because I haven't selected any values I just get this blank chart area. So I want to enter data in now so you can just put your cursor over this blank space, right click and select data. Okay, so I'm going to add in a set of data and I'm going to name it mean change in pulse rate. My y values are going to be the mean for group A and also the mean for group B. And you can select OK. Right, you don't need a title because you will need to make up a figure description for your report and you can find more information about that in the guidelines um, which are on Blackboard. So you don't need the title so I'm going to select and delete. You don't need grid lines so I'm going to select and delete those and you also don't need this key or legend because you've, you're only presenting one set of data. What I do need to fix up is um, the y-axis and the x-axis. Okay, I don't have, for one thing, um, axis titles and my x-axis labels aren't very informative. Okay, so what you can do to change the labels on the x-axis is just to click on an empty cell on your spreadsheet and type in what you want to appear on the x-axis. Let's just say group A drank decaffeinated coffee. Okay. In the spreadsheet that you downloaded, there is information telling you which group drank which type of coffee. Okay. So, okay, so I've decided, so I've just hypothetically, group A drank decaffeinated coffee. And let's say group B drank caffeinated coffee. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the chart, right click on the white on the background, and select data. Here, where it says category x axis labels, you can select on the arrow and you can select the text that you just typed. Now you notice that those labels now appear on your x-axis. Okay, let's fix up the y-axis label. When you first look at this data, it looks like that there is a difference in the change in pulse rate between those who drank decaffeinated coffee and those that drank caffeinated coffee. Okay. But if you look closely at the values on the y-axis, the difference between the minimum value here and the maximum value is no more than two units. Okay, so I want to fix that up. So I'm going to double left click on the values on the y-axis. Okay, Go to scale and I want to change the minimum value to zero. It's also not really necessary to have your y-axis scaled to one decimal place. So I'm going to go to number and I'm going to uncheck this link to source option. Okay. So at the moment Excel is presenting the y-axis values to one decimal place because we formatted our numbers in our calculations here to one decimal place. So I'm going to tell Excel not to care about that. So I'm going to uncheck this link to source option, change the decimal places to zero, and then select OK. Now there's one final thing you need to do with the y-axis, and that is to give it a title. 
Okay, so um, I need to go to chart layout, access titles, and put in, I'm going to put in a rotated title. Okay. And then type in something informative. So here we're presenting the mean change in pulse rate. And it's important to put in your units. Oops. And there's your y-axis title. You can also put in a horizontal axis title. In this case, you can call it something like something like treatment or coffee treatment. Okay. Now, remember we calculated the standard deviation values. We need to present that in our graph. Okay, we already have the means here. Okay, but we need to put in the standard deviation values and represent them in error bars. Okay, so to do that, select either of the columns and you'll notice that all the columns get selected and double left click. If you want to go to error bars, you need to be displaying um, both positive and negative values in your error bar. You can choose your end style, I prefer caps. And then you need to be selecting custom values. So in other words, you want Excel to show the standard deviation values that you calculated. Okay, so I'm gonna select specify a value for the positive value, you select the two standard deviation values for group A and group B. And you do the same thing for the negative error value. And OK. Now you notice that because we've added in standard deviation data in our graph, um, the y-axis scale bar um, the maximum value is now at 90. Now this is a little bit messy for me, so I prefer the increments to be not at 10 units, but at 20 units. And that looks a lot nicer and clean. So that's how you plot your data in a column graph, presenting the means and the standard deviation represented in these error bars. So this is just showing the mean change in pulse rate between the two treatment groups, but you also need to plot another graph showing the mean change in respiration rate for the two groups. So I hope you found this tutorial useful and all the best with processing the data for your own report.